Hi everybody, this is Kairu, and this is going to be the very first part of my Minamoto campaign. I am a history teacher in Chicago, and I decided recently that I thought it would be a really good idea to do some Let's Plays of various video games with the intent of teaching people about history. I have been fascinated by history since I was in high school. I recently graduated college, and I've been substitute teaching and doing temporary teaching assignments, so I've got a little bit more time than if I were a permanent teacher, and I figured that this was a good way to continue with my passion, which is teaching people history, while also feeding my addiction for video games. Um, I'm going to be playing as the Minamoto with this Let's Play, because historically they were the ones who won the Genpei War, and I want to at least give a nod to that. I'm not necessarily going to do everything exactly according to what happened to history, but I'm going to be talking about the general era, the culture of people, various social castes in Japan at this point, um, religious conflicts, technological developments, kind of all of an overview of all of the different kinds of history of what was going on in Japan at this period. I don't claim to be an expert on any of these subjects, and if you find a problem with anything I've said, feel free to leave a comment. But I know quite a lot. I've lived in Japan for, for a chunk of my life. I've studied the history quite extensively in my college career, and I feel pretty confident that I can teach at least the, the average person things that they didn't know before about Japan. To start off with, uh, the Minamoto were a samurai clan in Japan in the time period of the Genpei War, which, as you can see, uh, is roughly the end of the 12th century in Japan. The reason for the Genpei War was that the imperial family had several claimants to the throne. Several claimants f who were from different mothers, but all descended from the imperial line. The mothers were members of various clans, and those clans went to war with one another in order to make sure that their son managed to become emperor. This was a time period before the samurai had really taken control of the society, and being emperor was still a very political position. In later eras, being the emperor was more of a religious role, but at this point, it's still a very... You know, you're assigning commissions, you are appointing governors, you are giving people favors, lands, you're taking it away from other people, so you're still doing a lot of the governance of a medieval feudal society. The samurai, on the other hand, are kind of just coming up. The samurai refer to people who literally serve the noble ca class in battle. Samurai at this point were not considered really nobles themselves, though they were warriors and respected in that regard. Samurai were often, by, especially by people in Kyoto, seen as kind of rural. They owned large fields, which was necessary to be a samurai because you needed to have a horse to really be considered a samurai. This was before the katana became the defining weapon of the samurai. This is when the bow was still really the main weapon that samurai used to settle wars. And this is also a time period when other types of warriors were more prevalent. Warrior monks were a much more common thing. They weren't necessarily armies, but they had certain organization, and they often fought with other monks over religious appointments to coveted uh, positions and becoming abbots or leaders of different temples and shrines. So those sorts of uh, feudal conflicts happened even in the religious theater of Japan at this point. So it's a very chaotic period, but my clan, the Minamoto, will stamp out our legacy and we will use especially our mounted archers in order to do that. I hope you guys enjoy this and I hope you learn a thing or two. Let's get started. Change that to long campaign and let's go. watch the cutscene when it loads up. If you want to skip it, feel free, but I think that I can find some good things to comment on in it. Come on, load up.
Sengoku Jirai was a time of war. But those who say Japan has never seen the like have short memories. Long before the Ashigara Shogunate, 400 years of peace were shattered by the Genpo. Amaterasu, the sun goddess, watched over the emperors of Japan and gave them power. Their authority was absolute. An emperor could retire from the world and still have a complete mastery over Japan. Which was a very common practice at the time. Now, imperial might is crumbling, weakened by three noble families. For many years, the Taira have secretly controlled the imperial court. Sophisticated, cunning, ruthless. They fought against any challenges to their hidden power. Their main tactic was to marry their daughters to emperors and their sons. The Minamoto are another clan that did this, but they were more samurai and less aristocratic. Fujiwara had a lot of ties to China at this period as well, which was very prestigious for them. We are going to resist the Tyra's attempt to take over Japan by having their son named Emperor. Perhaps this moment is a chance to right wrongs. The imperial peace is at an end. War is coming, and blood will flow. All right. Let's get going with our society. So we don't live near Kyoto. Kyoto is where everything is happening right now. Kyoto and Nara are the two most important cities in Japan. We are very far from them. Right. I'm going to exit this. If you want to finish reading it, feel free to pause. Alright, let's get started. So. This is my territory. I am the Minamoto, the Kama, uh, the Minamoto, and I am going to be using these two territories as the base for my expansion to eventually take all of Japan. All right. I might not actually do every video all the way up to taking you know the last couple of islands, but I'm certainly going to win this campaign. My goal will be helped quite a lot by the fact that in Sagami, I have a blacksmith. Blacksmiths and weaponsmiths allow me to increase the melee attack melee def and armor of my troops, especially in this particular um, version of Shogun. The effects of armor are really, really noticeable. It allows you to withstand a lot more arrows, so I'm going to be going for an armory here, an armorer, and I've already got my Bushi training grounds. I will upgrade that to a Bushi school. This is the building that will allow me to recruit samurai units. I'm going to be all about samurai. I will recruit as few levy and attendants as possible, which will probably mean that my armies are going to be somewhat small, but hopefully I will be able to overcome that with superior strategy. My other big asset right now is Izu, because Izu has a gold mine. If I were to upgrade that to its fullest extent, it would drastically increase my income. It's just something about humans. We love gold. It's a kind of all over the world been a very common way to just imply wealth, sort of. Um, early societies knew that gold was useful and valuable and made jewelry out of it and put it as offerings to gods. Nowadays, we wear it to symbolize eternal matrimony, all sorts of things. So gold is a very good resource to have because it will make me rich. I will also probably put a market here. Right off the bat, I've already got Bushido and Bushi. I will probably go for Samurai Way so that I can have my mounted Samurai as soon as possible. 
After I do that, I will probably get a few Bunka technologies, which will allow me to increase my income, increase my food by building better farms. Nothing quite increases uh, the rate of advancement of civilization like food surpluses, so I can certainly go for that. I don't believe that I'm really going to go for Buddhist temples or warrior monks. That is not my clan's strong suit. And honestly, my clan, being mostly samurai, would probably view warrior monks as being kind of stodgy and in the way. They often rioted, the warrior monks that is, and would cause lots of disruption for towns and for the political establishment. And so my clan most likely would have viewed them as kind of upstarts, not necessarily upstarts maybe, but an annoyance and something to be done away with. I'm going to go for Samurai Way. Diplomatically, I will attempt to trade with the Takeda because they are just north of me and a friendly clan. I might end up requesting allegiance from them with my met with my not Metsuke, my Junsatsushi. This is an agent of mine. View him as kind of like the diplomat of my clan. He helps. He occasionally will help govern a town. He'll increase the tax rate. Or I can send him into other clans' territory, and he will convert them over to my clan's allegiance. At this time period in Japan, whether or not you had local support was a very big deal, as it is really in any time period. But if you could convince the other wealthy, noble, and perhaps samurai class people that your clan was the more legitimate claimant, then they would support you. And if that happens enough in, say, this clan, which is now Tyra, if they eventually go Minamoto completely, they're at 20%, if they were to go to 100%, maybe a rebellion would occur, or even before then, I could just offer the town a chunk of money and they would join my clan. It, it would become my town. So I'm going to work on doing that here in Suruga. I don't want to do it in Kai quite yet. In the meantime, I can go to war. So, to my east, go on, go out of the ca castle, there we go, is Musashi. This is another samurai controlled town. Um, it is pretty unfriendly toward me right now because they are a Taira clan and I'm not trading with them. I can trade with the Kajiwara, let's do that really quick. But I'm going to declare war on Edo. Do not need to call my ally in for help. I want the glory of this conflict. Now we'll move out. Most likely they won't attack me because I have the superior force. I'll also split my general out. That way, when I do fight the battle, they both get experience. He will get three, and my main general will get ten. So I've got my blacksmith on, my armor on the way. Eventually I will upgrade all of my farms to the most pertinent thing I can make them. And we will get this going. All right, I have a mission. Obtain the allegiance of any province. I will become an influential expert. And I don't believe I have a time limit on this, so I'm probably going to do it in Suruga. Yep, see it's becoming steadily more Minamoto and less Taira and Fujiwara. Because my Junsatsushi is convincing people that I am the true, the true heir to the imperial throne. I should have the influence. And a lot of the reason that people want this influence, I will explain, is because of government appointments. If you get good government appointments, it solidifies your family line. And those government appointments are made by the emperor. So if you are a samurai warlord, you cannot be the emperor. You do not have the imperial bloodline. Only people descended from Amaterasu herself are allowed to be emperor. However, if you have influence in the imperial court, and you perhaps marry one of your daughters to an emperor or an emperor's brother or a emperor's son, then you can have a lot more of those political appointments. They will send your people, your brothers, sons, retainers, 
to various towns to be the governors, to be tax collectors, and they'll obviously be able to make a decent amount of money doing that, and will increase the power of the clan further. My clan, being this far away, doesn't really have that option right now. I'm not going to be given any government appointments. But if I were to conquer all of this territory, I would perhaps gain some government appointments. I, however, in the meantime, want to conquer this area. It is very, very valuable, has iron, craft goods, which can give me good bows, a holy site, and silk. All very, very, very valuable resources, and I want to take it. First step to doing that is right here in Musashi. I can't reach it this turn, so I'm going to go ahead and pass turn, and hopefully we'll have a battle on our hands. Oh, nope, I actually did make it. Let's fight this. No dropping players. Yeah. I will also be uploading a co-op campaign um, during the Sengoku Jidai, you know, the normal Shogun uh, era, with my friend Boba Fetishes. He is a college friend of mine, and he is also quite good at this game. He's probably better than I am. And we will be playing as a historically accurate alliance of the Oda and Tokugawa. I'm sure there are other Let's Plays of this, but hopefully we'll be able to offer perhaps some interesting historical insights as to the actual events that took place in these two remarkable men's lives, these two remarkable clans. All right, battle is starting. So one thing to mention about warfare during this period, the Genpei War, is that armies were nowhere near as organized as they were in later eras of Japan. They were pretty loose formations generally, and it wouldn't necessarily be a unit of men charging another unit of men in tight formation using group tactics. It was much more along the lines of your best warriors, your mounted cavalry with bows and heavy armor, would call each other out and have basically bow jousts. They would charge one another, firing arrows as they went, and if neither one went down from the arrows, or was killed, or struck in the horse, or wounded badly enough, they would wheel back around and charge each other again, firing arrows at one another. And that was really how warfare was done. It didn't really change in Japan until the invasions of the Mongols in about, what I think, 200 years from this war. So in the meantime, all of my armies are going to be in this sort of loose formation. I can't change that. And they will be, I hope, mostly made of men like this. Mounted samurai with bows and swords. So let's get going. Start back. I'm going to tease them a bit with my general. If you notice the armor that the general is wearing... It's kind of boxy, very large. This armor wasn't made of steel. It was made of lacquered leather, also known as lamellar, or cotton, or silk, or small plates of metal, perhaps, but mostly out of light materials. And this was not necessarily armor that you were looking to be able to take an infinite number of blows and wade through melee combat against heavily armored foes. This was armor for stopping arrows. If you look at this armor, see if I can get a good shot, yeah. If you look at this armor and you look at that big square, if I'm shooting at these guys from the side, that big square actually covers quite a lot of their torso, a lot of their vital regions. And so the arrow might penetrate it, but it would not penetrate nearly as deep, and it would get snagged and lose a lot of its kinetic energy and so not pierce the person's body. So this armor was very, very good at what it was designed to do, which was stop arrows. Later samurai armor is made of more steel, more iron, um, and is more designed for f a melee fight where you're fighting two guys and you're hammering at each other and blows are going to get in and perhaps, and will cut through lighter materials. All right, I'm going to get a volley off and then run away because I don't want to get hit by them. 
dodge their arrows a little bit, run some more. I got another volley off, that got me a few more kills. I can call my other general up to support. So notice what I'm doing, and what is the advantage of mounted bows, is that I'm getting a volley off, and then before they can really effectively respond, I run away. I can get volley after volley off, and not actually take much damage in return, because I'm mounted and they are not. And if they come close enough to me, I will charge them with my two-handed swords. So really, most likely, a fight like what you're seeing right now wouldn't happen exactly like this. It would be more along the lines of my guys would individualistically run forward firing arrows and run back and run forward and run back and run forward and eventually charge through. Now they're getting shot by my foot archers, who are actually pretty poor at this. But they're getting kills. And then I will get the charge. Everybody hold fire. With my katana. Oh, and they're running away. My sword attendants are scaring them so bad that they're trying to get back to the town. And my guys stumble because the charge mechanic works that way. Don't shoot. No, actually don't. Oh, gosh. That was bad. So I was trying to control that unit, and apparently I was also controlling my sword attendants. Oh, I will still win this fight. This is still kind of a rock, paper, scissors type game where certain units will beat other units. Big two-handed swords will beat Naginata. Personally, I don't think that that would actually be the case in a fair, like, one-on-one -on -one fight. I think a Naginata would be the superior option because of reach. Not because it necessarily would cut harder or penetrate deeper or do more damage, but because it's a longer range weapon. And, I, and you can strike with the longer range weapon before the enemy can get to you. And that's a huge advantage. There are ways to overcome it, and I would take a good, good swordsman over a crummy spearman any day. But I do think that overall, people who use pole weapons have advantage over other types of melee weapons because of reach. But for the purposes of the game, swords beat spears. Appears to be coming back. Come on, buddy. I swear I'll be friendly. So samurai means to serve. So the samurai at this point were the bodyguards and warriors in service to nobles. They didn't hold political power themselves necessarily. They were, at this point, starting to be given political power by the nobles. But at this point, they're still considered subordinate to them. In later eras of Japanese history, it's the samurai, the daimyo, who actually run the country, who levy the taxes, who uh, do pretty much all of the jobs of governments, you know, protect the roads, that sort of thing. At this point, right now, it's still aristocratic nobles generally from Kyoto and Nara. Right, so they're going to shoot at me, I'm going to retreat. My guys are just able to keep firing and shooting and shooting and shooting as they go. It is super, super useful. shoot that bow levy and then before it can shoot I will dodge its arrows it's gonna shoot now Come on. maybe they're trying to charge me because they, they are in range there we go now they're gonna shoot at me So I took a few casualties to that, but not a lot. And now I'm going to pull them deeper in and shoot back at them again. I can actually just charge them. And I will slow down and then speed back up in order to kind of dodge some more of those arrows. That didn't really actually look like it worked, so I'm going to not finish the charge with this guy. 
And kapow. Without a spear, if you get charged down by a horseman, the sheer mass of the beast is probably going to be what kills you. Plow right through you. Or the fact that the man has the beast's momentum helping him. Lost a few more of my daimyo than I would have wanted, but that's okay. So now they're charging me with some more Naginata Levy, who are really, really poor soldiers overall. These, what I'm looking at right now, these Naginata Levy, they are not Samurai. They would basically be guys called up to fight just because they're needed to fill out the ranks on the field. They are not the elite warriors who, like, you gotta realize, to be a Samurai is actually quite an expensive prospect. You've gotta own a horse, you've gotta own all of your arms and armor, it's you who buys them, not a government, not your lord. You, you pay for all of your arms and armor, unless you are the direct retainer of somebody else. You've got to own enough land that you're, or at least administer enough land that your taxes can, af that the taxes levied from it can allow you enough time to train constantly, because being a samurai is not something that you just do every once in a while, this is your job. And so you need to have enough money to basically practice all the time. You know, part of the reason that there aren't tons and tons of, like, ninth degree black belts is because not everybody can take the time to train that hard. A lot of the ninth degree black belts are there because they've been able to make money doing it. But, you know, to be able to train at horse archery, which is a very difficult talent, all the time means that you've got to be a relatively wealthy individual. Same as a European knight. The horse is expensive, the weapons are expensive, and you are the one who is expected to pay for it. shuffling of my units. Hopefully make them a little bit more effective. And I'm going to charge in with my daimyo. Oh, come on. Oh, he's out of arrows too. Well, then I should charge him. Alright, so now I'm going to bum rush their general. Hopefully the fact that I have two units going into him, and he's just got the one, and I'm the one getting off the charge, should help me carry through and I'm going to send my daimyo back, actually, since he's finished taking that charge. Now, bows, stop shooting into that melee. Alright, get out of there, guys. Alright, so I've defeated him. Took a few more casualties on my general's bodyguards than I like, but still, no more than 20 each. Not even 20 each. And the battle is over. So, they got so scared that they ran away, which is a reasonable thing for a peasant warrior to do. At this point in history, the strict code of Bushido hasn't been as much of a thing, so samurai might have backed off from a battle that would obviously be lost, but for the most part, samurai were expected to hold. Peasants, eh, you might have to threaten them if you want them to stay. I'm not going to continue battle because I don't need to chase these units down, I've just conquered the town. 